Over 30 million people have nail fungus. There's no nail fungus shaming here. That's roughly 10% of the U.S. population which is forced to treat nail fungus painfully and risk major side effects. Unfortunately, nail fungus does not go away on its own. Radiancy, the makers of Clear Touch, make medical aesthetic devices for the professional industry that treat skin conditions. Nail fungus is no laughing matter, and it is not to be ashamed of. Did you know that untreated foot fungus can be transmitted to your partner while you sleep? Take care of this issue today. Visit cleartouchnails.com to purchase the revolutionary technology. That's cleartouchnails.com. Yo, the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast World Tour kicks off in a few days. July 28th at the Cedar Cultural Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. July 29th. 2016 at the Turner Hall Ballroom in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A live conversation, a live podcast with the great Spree, the Latrell Spreewell I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. The 31st from Lincoln Hall in Chicago, July 31st. All tickets are at IamRapportTour.com. 28th, Minneapolis. 29th, Milwaukee with Latrell Spreewell. The 31st, Lincoln Hall, Chicago. I am Rapport World Tour. Yo. Yo, Eli. Hey. This is uh, the Gringo Man Dingo and Mr. Moody, G Monetti. What's up, Eli? The 2015 Podcast Host of the Year. Of course, of course. And, and, And you are the unofficial, official political correspondent. For the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast, uh, we're on the phone with Mr. Eli Lake. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, Great to be here. And, and, and I'll, I'll be honest, this is a pre-recorded phone interview during the Republican National Convention. We're trying to make sense of it all. Um, I want to talk about this, and then I have some questions about Turkey, and 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 then we'll let you go because I'm sure you you, you you need to be focused on that as opposed to be as opposed to be playing around with uh some some crazy podcast people. So my first question is who's who runs things underneath Bloomberg at, at where you work at at, at at the Bloomberg News Corporation. What is it called? Bloomberg what you know we don't fact check at the yeah, end. Yeah, it's just Bloomberg. It's a huge media company. Okay, at Bloomberg Media. Would they let let's say for instance me, who's never had any experience running a news corporation come in and run Bloomberg because I, I, I'm not making this analogy because we have a guy who's never had anything to do with politics potentially running the country could potentially be the president. So I want to put my, 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 my name in the hat to be the next person that runs Bloomberg. I want it to be Bloomberg and then, and then Rappaport. Can, can you hook that up? <laughs> yeah. Um, you are, he does not have any governing experience or legislating experience. He has experience, uh, running casinos that have failed, uh, starting a bunch of fake online universities and lending his name to a variety of direct peers. So that's, that is the man's experience. He's also, you know, had a reality TV show. And it's been a successful sort of media celebrity. Now, now, don't you think, like, you know, some of the the the, the more uh, straight laced pundits of the I Am Rapport Stereo podcast would be like, oh well, Rapport, you're a Jew fuck, and you got your fucking black co host and now you are Eli. Are you Jewish? I am Jewish. Yes. And now you got your fucking Jewish unofficial political correspondent and what do you fucking guys know you 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 you're just a couple of liberal liberal hipster fucks like well, what about the people that that make this strong case for Donald Trump like what is their true belief like why are people backing him it, it, do you, like you know being totally unbiased what can you say uh, well, there's about all different ki- there's all different kinds of people that are backing him and you guys had, I think, a very accurate slogan, which I'm not going to repeat. Oh, a year oh, ago, I, I, Mr. Mr. Moody can do that. Sorry to interrupt you, uh, G. Moody. Yeah, Moody, like the Moody slogan. I think that is a subset. Right. So there are people who are just bigots and haters who have been attracted to Trump because he said outrageous things. Remember a year ago when he got in about Mexicans and Muslims in particular, everybody jumped on him. He also said some outrageous stuff about McCain, and he. He doubled down, he tripled down, and that, I think, opened up space for, as I said, a subset. But I think there's a lot of other Trump supporters who look at Washington, in particular, and the media, 
and what they see is these elites and institutions, and they say, you have fucked up the country, you act like you have all this authority, but we, we're against you. We just want someone who's going to clean house and start again, and that they're not, I don't think those people have hate in their heart. I do think that's why they're attracted to Trump. Wow. Um, Moody, do you, you know what I'm saying? Th- it's like different types. No, I got you. I got you. Moody, do you have anything to, to, to follow up with uh, with that on Eli Lake? Because we, we've been talking yeah, about I, it. I, I, I want to ask him, what strategy did he use and uh, to, to talk to that that uh, that segment? I, I, I think it was the Southern strategy, kind of modernized, instead of anti-black, anti-immigration, anti-Hispanic, uh, anti-Muslim that speaks to that segment, racial resentment kind of thing. Oh, there's a lot of racial resentment now. It is, the tensions are super high, and you guys have talked about it, and I thought it was, I think this week in the podcast, last week in the podcast, where you talked about it, and I think emotions are so raw, and you saw last night a heavy message from most of the speakers were, Blue Lives Matter, we, we stand behind the cops, we are on the side of the police, and in 2016, in the summer of 2016, that is that's that's saying we're against the blacks. Right. So I'm not. I'm not. I, I want to stress though. I don't think. I think there are people who take the side of law enforcement and are not openly racist the way that Archie Bunker or Strom Thurmond or you know historical racists of, of before. I think we're in a different place. I don't think those people are thinking that way. But that's the new vessel. That's the new way that gets into those racial resentments that are always kind of under the surface. Right, right. And, and, was... and all your years of, of, of covering politics and studying politics, have you ever heard of the term, because the other night during the, 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 the first night of the Republican uh, convention, somebody used the term I had never heard it called a subgroup. Subgroup? Yeah, did you hear the guy he called, he said a subgroup. He basically was, he, he was and the subgroup that he was referring to was Anybody that's not white. Uh, now, you know, we don't fact check here, and I feel like, I feel like we threw you for a loop, but did you, did you not hear that guy use the term subgroup? I, don't, I did not hear that, and I have to go back, but I would say, having watched it today when they did the roll call vote, which was its own kind of crazy because there were some states who felt they were being robbed. It's, I mean, like, this, the convention is not all together. I mean, it's, it, you can see it's not, it's, it was put together hastily. But they made sure for the, the woman announcing the votes for Trump in California was a black woman. They made it sure there were a lot of minorities they wanted to have on camera when they were going through that roll call, um, which is a traditional thing. If you think about it, the Republicans have been doing this now for 30 years. They really resent being considered the, the, the racist party, the party that, as you said, went for that Southern strategy. And there's been this huge effort for 30, 40 years, I'd say, for the Republicans to find minorities and say, no, 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 any, you, you know, everybody, you can have conservatives, liberals, it doesn't matter. And then Trump comes along, and I think he definitely plays back in that old Nixon way, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That racial resistance. He's just like, whatever, you know, that 40-year yeah. project, you know, it's fine. And I thought it was really interesting how today they made sure that they had a lot of minorities in the delegation where they were announcing, and, you, and it was very obvious when we were watching all the states announce their votes for Trump. Yeah, and right. you know, I, I I had heard that um, there was a breakdown put out in Hollywood for for actors. I think these are actors playing these parts. <laughs> I had heard they were there was a big casting call, and it was like we, we'll, we'll give you ten grand, we'll get you on a private jet, we'll get you to Cleveland ASAP, uh, and and it was like all all uh, you know all it was an open call for any uh, Latino. Uh, black or, or any brown brown skinned people. So I don't know. I've never seen these people before, but I, I don't know. Right. I can't say that's a coincidence. I can't say that it's not. Now, all right, let, let me ask you a question. What happened in Turkey and what's going to happen to the 2,800 plus guys that, that tried the coup? Like, so, so g- g- give it to me in layman terms. Last Friday, they tried to do a fucking coup in Turkey. What, ha- what, what, what did they try to do? Why did they try to do it? And what was the end result? Okay. First of all, it wasn't 2,800 people. There are mass arrests in Turkey right now that are rounding up people that almost definitely had zero to do with the coup. That's number one. Number two, traditionally... Military coups are done, almost always, though not always, and this time it's different, by the head of the military, 
and all the senior officers. What we know is that this coup was like mid-level guys, and part of what they were doing was also detaining, we're looking, we're still trying to figure it out, what happened to the more senior generals. And that's important because as it failed. The other thing that you got to keep in mind is that they didn't actually get the president. So if you're trying to do a coup, you need to get custody of the leader you seek to depose. That's how it works. And if you don't oh. do that, then you have Venezuela in 2002 or what we just saw in Turkey, because the president was able to go to the airport and go on his phone and basically say, I'm still the leader, get into the streets. And that's what happened. Now, that's the, so that's the first thing. Am I, are we okay so far? Yes, yes. You yeah, didn't use yeah. any, any buzzwords that I had to stop you and have them explain to, and I appreciate that. I, I appreciate okay. that you realize you're speaking to a failed product, two failed products of the New York <laughs> City public school education system. So thank you for yeah. that. <laughs> now, we don't really know who did the coup yet. We're still, I mean, we still are trying to figure that out. But what the president of Turkey says, and there is some reason to believe this is maybe partly, there is some truth to it, that within the military and the police in Turkey, there is a shadow network that are loyal to another Islamic cleric. Mm. So about 15 years ago, the popular Muslim party won power for the first time in Turkey, which mm. is a really big deal. Oh. And that guy who was in charge of it is the person who's, who was almost opposed, named Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Now, he used to be allies, and this is where it gets a little crazy, with some, someone named Fatula Gulen, who in 1999 came to the United States at first for medical procedures, but then sought asylum and lives in the Pocono Mountains as we speak. Mm. Wow. So when Erdogan first emerged, once they had, they were scrambling the jets, one of the things he said to his own people is, our country will not be ruled from the Poconos. Now, I'm from Philadelphia, and I know y'all are from New York. We know the Poconos. Did this cocksucker's <laughs> right. hanging around the Poconos right now? It's, the president of Turkey thinks that a, that a 76-year-old imam... Muslim teacher in the Poconos just tried to, to basically take over the country. Holy wow. shit. He's at, he, he's at Mount, Mount Airy Lodge. Yeah, he's up yeah. there at Camelback <laughs> Mountain. Uh, I used to ski at Camelback Mountain when I was young. My mom took me up there about uh, me and P.E., Professor, uh, Professor Eric Rappaport. We went up there. We actually got into a little brawl with the ski teacher, a cocksucker named Johnny. Anyway, I don't want to get sidetracked. All right, so, so finish explaining this about this coup. So there has been beef between Gulen and Erdogan for two and a half years. And it gets really complicated, but... Erdogan, the president, has already shut down a major Turkish newspaper that's affiliated with this guy in the Poconos, and he's already arrested judges, teachers, and others that he says have been loyal to this, to this guy's network. Now what he's doing is he's finishing the job, and their fate is a really huge issue because, I mean, as I said, this is where it gets a little tricky. Because traditionally, if this was just like a third world country, if this was Iraq or this was, you know, in a lot of places in the world, there's been a lot of people who are going to be executed because they tried the coup and Erdogan is arresting thousands and thousands of people. And there's a potential, you know, massive execution that would happen. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, he hasn't done it yet. And Turkey's part of NATO, which is... The alliance, the United States the military alliance, the United States has with Europe, and there's a lot of pressure that if he does some some wild Saddam Hussein style shit, then maybe Turkey should not be in NATO. That is a question people are thinking about right now. Wow, Jesus Christ, Ooh. Jesus Christ, world's falling apart. Now, yeah, now, turmoil. All right, that 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 was a very very uh, a simple explanation. I appreciate that. I got two more questions. Who, who does it look like Hillary's going to choose to be her uh, her uh, uh, vice president candidate? 
oh, you're throwing me for a loop. And I love, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to like venture out there. I don't have right. any intel on that. I don't really, I don't want to ever get beyond what I know. So All I right. don't know. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I, 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 well, well, who, who, who would you, like an educated guess, who would you think she would think? Well, you know, the debate I would think would have be having in the Hillary camp right now is if you think that Donald Trump is, is not going to break past that 35 percent and the states that always go to the Republican and you're going to walk away. The New York Times just came out with uh, an analysis that says that Hillary has a 75 percent chance of winning the election based on their you know, analysis of polls and battleground states. Right. So if you think that, um, then you can double down with a vice presidential pick that was more progressive, like Elizabeth Warren. Right. Um, if you still thought that it was really going to be close and you needed to get undecided voters and you wanted to project kind of a strength in a time of crisis and turmoil, she's very close with um, General Stanley McRaven. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Stan McChrystal and uh, General McRaven, who are you know people who were really overseeing a lot of the special operations war against al-Qaeda, and, uh, you know, there's video from 2012, I think, of Hillary at an event with, Stan, um, with, uh, Admiral McRaven. And it's like extraordinary to see they're, they're very close. And so that was always the thought that people had over the recent years. But I have, I want to say, you guys don't fact check. I don't have that inside information on this. This is just speculation. Absolutely. I appreciate that. And finally, real quick, how has your life changed? professionally since you've been anointed the unofficial official I am Rapport stereo podcast political consultant is it just a, is this just okay. a win a windfall of, of just is it just been like a, a like a, just a total change in your whole life <laughs> my status has risen significantly because you have a lot of people in the media especially in the in the DC kind of media that listen to you so people heard me on it they couldn't believe it so that was wow. great that was, and then I've gotten to know so much of the rap pack on Twitter and social media, which is great too. I mean, you have a whole community of really creative people behind the podcast, so it feels like it's more than just a thing you listen to, you know, while you're buying groceries or something. So yep. that's great. All right. Well, uh, and they love you. Can I can I ask you a quick question? Yes, yes, you can. Okay, because I really want to hear. I was so we didn't talk about it, but the the top celebrities so far is like Scott Baio, who played Chachi at the Republican convention. So my question to you is, why is Hollywood never going to get behind a Republican, it seems? Well, I don't think it's... I think it's more so they're never going to get behind Donald Trump publicly. Now, rest assured, there are people in Hollywood and there are shameful people who will do it shamefully. They'll they'll vote for Trump and they're, 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 they're people that I work with. I, I, and, and I'm sure there's neighbors, there's, there's employees, there's bosses. I think it's just, I think it's too risky um, um, to do if you're, if you're a high, high level public person. So you're left with Antonio Sabato Jr. That's the fucking guy you got. You got Antonio Sabato Jr. Who, who had more lines of dialogue during the Republican convention that he's had as in his entire career as a fucking actor. <laughs> so that's what you get. Uh, Chachi needs a real talking to from the Fonz. I don't know where the fuck the Fonz is. I don't know where Henry Winkler is in all this. Uh, 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 I don't know how it got that far, how Fonzie didn't call him up and be like, hey, and, you know, get, you know, <laughs> get, get, you know, the Pinky Tuscadero to smack him around or the actual Malachi twins, the Malachi <laughs> brothers to give him an actual Malachi crunch. I don't know. But Antonio Sabato Jr., he'll be sending that speech he gave last night in for his next audition reel. You know, because all <laughs> actors, they have reels. It's like a highlight reel. That'll be his fucking highlight reel to get his next job. So I, I oh, trust great. me, there'll be there'll be big big time actors, producers, and directors voting for him. They just didn't want to do it publicly. Um, but I mean, I'm just saying, you Barack Obama, he goes to Hollywood. I mean, you know, I think he's going to get a five picture deal. That's how tight he is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they hated George W. Bush. I mean, Reagan came from Hollywood. He was the governor, but I mean, by the time he was president, I've just seen that Hollywood's like it's really tight with the Democratic Party historically. Yes, and 
the Republicans just left out in the cold, except for like Clint Eastwood, you know, and Gary Sinise. Right, Clint Eastwood and Gary Sinise and Cl- Clint uh, and, and Charl- Charlton Heston. Right, that's and, right, that's right. right. All these guys. I, I, listen, I even where was Gary Sinise? I don't know why he didn't show up for this. I'm telling oh, you, it's too risky. Who, it, trust me, Dana who, like, White can't, can't really fuck with Trump. Dana White, you know that was that was ballsy for him to be up there. And, and the thing about Dana White speaking is all he talked about is him as a personal friend. Listen. I, you can. I have. I have friends that could say great things about me, and I have other friends that could say this is the biggest scumbag. Don't leave five dollars around this cocksucker. We all got friends that'll vouch for us. So I don't know why Dana White went up there. He just made four point two million dollars. So I guess he could do whatever the fuck he wants. But right. I, I. I don't know. I think it's too. It's too much of a, a, a risky thing. But if you made four point two billion dollars, you could do whatever the fuck you want. Um, Eli, I don't want to keep you. I know you probably, you know, have to have to watch the rest of the convention. I appreciate it. I appreciate the insight and the information and the sense of humor. Um, and uh, you know, hopefully, we'll, we'll get you back on here real soon. Great, thank you so much. Bye, Eli. This is the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. And we got a special, special, uncut, unfiltered little snippet from the Republican National Convention. Let me tell you a story. When I was growing up on a farm, ooh, we had me a big old black man working for me. We was gonna lynch his ass. We had a nice fire burning. Mm-hmm. Marshmallows going. Yeah. Big old party. We had ourselves a little lynching party. So we pulled this big old black one out. Tie his ass up. He jumped clear over the noose. I said, oh shit. Daddy chased him down. Beat his ass good. I said, Daddy, we can't let him go. We can't lynch him, Daddy. He done jumped clear over the goddamn news. Daddy smacked my face. Don't ever curse in my face, boy. I said, shit, daddy smacked me again. I said, but he jumped clear over the goddamn news. I ain't never seen nobody jump over no news. States rights. It's states rights. We need to keep him. I know he acting up, but please let me keep him, daddy. I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast is sponsored by Casper Mattress. Casper Mattress is an award-winning sleep company. I sleep on a Casper Mattress every night. When I'm in New York, I have a Casper Mattress. G. Monetti, what do you like about your Casper Mattress? It forms to the contours of my black body. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Casper Mattress was awarded one of the best adventures of 2015. A king-size mattress can cost up to $1,200, $1,500, but at Casper, you get a king-size mattress for only $950. The mattress shows up in a box, and then it unfolds and decompresses. It's not an air mattress. Casper guarantees their mattress so much that you could sleep on it, lay on it, nap on it for 100 nights. If you do not like it, Casper will refund the mattress for free. They will pick it up and refund it, give you all your money back. Go to casper.com forward slash Rappaport. That's casper.com forward slash Rappaport. Use the promo code Rappaport, R-A-P-A-P-O-R-T. Save 50 bucks now on a Casper mattress. All right, this is the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast, coming live and direct from the gloom tomb of New York City. I am in here with the 2015 podcast co-host of the year, Mr. Gerald Moody. What it is. Last name rhymes with duty. For sure. Some people call him the Black Ed McMahon. Others just call him G. Monetti. Yeah, I like that. G. Monetti. Uh, My name is Michael Rappaport. You may know me as the Gringo Mandingo, uh, the White Arsenio Hall, or the Backdoor Man. And you are now listening to the I Am Rappaport Stereo Variety Show. We're no longer a podcast. Yeah. This is the I Am Rappaport Variety Show. Yep. Because we mix and match. We do it all. We're... We come from different angles. 
We come from different POVs every single episode. Absolutely. Most recently, we, we, we have been the, the, the NFL insiders of the week. Were. Uh, Brandon Marshall, the great Brandon Marshall, who was uh, nice enough to give us an interview uh, in, the, in, the, in the last episode of the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast, New York Jet, former Denver Bronco, former Chicago Bear, yep. former Miami Dolphin, now with the New York Jets, J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Um, we made headlines. We've been, all, we've been, the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast name has been painted across every sports show there is. ESPN, Daily News, ESPN Radio, Sports Nation, NFL.com, and so on and so on and so on. And basically why we made uh, worldwide news is because Brandon, Je- uh, Brandon Marshall, sorry, Brandon Jennings is the hopefully healthy backup point guard for the New York Knicks going uh, forward. Uh, B. Marshall, um, I didn't even think twice about it, to be honest with you. He made comment about uh, you know, his concern that the Jets haven't signed uh, Fitzpatrick, yeah, Fitzy. Yeah, I heard that. And, uh, yeah, I listened to that. And, and, and he basically said you know, he hadn't heard from him in a while. Um, and anyway, it went totally viral. What did you think about his comments? I, I, I didn't like how he uh, put Fitzpatrick out there like that because like, Fitzpatrick trying to get his money. Uh huh. He don't got no time to be texting you, <laughs> right? Or uh, he trying to deal with other GMs around the NFL. Maybe he want to work with other receivers. He's like, "Be Marshall, you, you got your contract. You, you're living in a in a in a, you're in a fly in BK. crib with all view of the entire city, all Word. five boroughs." I'm just trying to get signed. And these motherfuckers trying to shortchange me, so I don't got time to text you and say. Okay, I'm gonna work out because I don't know if I'm gonna be down with these motherfuckers. Right. So you think that we should, you, maybe we should get Fitzpatrick on here next? I guarantee you, he will say the same thing. Shit, that's what we should do to try to get uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick on the uh, the next episode of the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. Fitz trying to get that paper. He ain't got no time to be. Fitz texting. has got bills to pay. Don't take it personal. Right. Right. Fitz is like, I, I need to. Uh, uh, I, I got fucking rent coming up in August. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. Right. And if Marshall. <laughs> was in his position, you wouldn't text him back either. Yeah, B. Marshall would be like, fuck you, Fitz. Yeah, I'm trying to get this paper. We love B. Marshall. We love Fitzpatrick. Um, see, I'm Rapport Stereo Podcast, a.k.a. The Variety Show. Word. Um, w- w- what do you got, Moody? We're, we're face-to-face here in New York City. We, we haven't been face-to-face uh, doing a podcast for a minute. Yo, my prediction uh, first, no, I want to backtrack. Okay, backtrack, Mr. Monetti. I want to say the ball boys for the New England Patriots have oh, yeah. been but- validated. Yes. They threw them under the bus and said they were liars. But those texts were the smoking gun. Your man is a cheater. Yes. He can never be considered the greatest quarterback. Why? Because he's been convicted <laughs> of cheating. You're talking about Tom Brady. Yes. He's up there with Shoeless Joe Jackson. Yes. Barry Bonds. Right. When you take Nixon. Nixon. These are all historical cheats. You're up there now. Right. Tom so when Brady. you take the punishment, you are adm- it's an admission of guilt. Now they're saying that the Players Association might try to take it to the Supreme Court, and I'm saying, just fucking stop. I don't want to talk about it. I was talking to my man Bill Burr today. Even he was like, I'm over this shit. I'm so done with it. Bill admitted he was a cheater. No, he didn't admit it. He won't let go. He's like a fucking little redheaded pit bull. Affleck got a relationship with this yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, fucking Affleck. Tom Brady. He's so classy. He's so, Tom's so classy. Tom Brady, but he's so classy. If he's classy, why are you fucking with the football? Why are you fucking with the balls? Welcome to Play It, a new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business, sports, tech, entertainment, and more. Play it at play.it. All right, let's jump into the politics. Yeah. We came up with the slogan... I hate the blacks and I hate the Hispanics and I can't stand those hook-nosed Jews. 
and you do too. Vote Donald Trump. That 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 sentiment. That sentiment has been spewed across the Republican campaign from day one. Now, some of you cynics might be like, whoa, Rappaport, you don't know what you're talking about. How could you say anything you don't fact check? Oh, Rappaport, you're just a hook-nosed Jew from New York. Oh, Rappaport, your guy Moody, he's a fucking black guy. He's a black guy fuck from, from Brooklyn. Yeah, and you don't know any about this. And did prove me wrong. Did you see the fury in the people's eyes at day one of that uh, of the Republican national camp- campaign, did you? Was there? A, a, is there any official head count on any Latins, blacks, or Jews there? I saw a bunch of black dudes with cowboy hats. What the fuck are you doing wearing a cowboy hat? Word. Listen to me, you dumb cocksucker! You black cowboy hat wearing motherfucker! You think these crazy cocksuckers like you? You dumb fuck! Take that fucking cowboy hat off and run, you dumb motherfucker! Because these cocksuckers want to ball bat you! They'll string you up! They'll fucking string you up as fast as you can say! Jumping Jack Flash, you motherfucker! I never seen that many black people with cowboy hats on. Is that some sort of sign? I've never seen. I know in Texas they wear it because it's culture. I get that, but this was a different thing. This is, this is being orchestrated. Put the hat on. Right. So you can be a good old boy. Right. But in your history, that hat meant they lighten a the fire. And that means? They lighten a the fire and 20,000 come to see your ass strung up. And now you up there with the hat on. And who's money who's on CNN? The, 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 I think the, it's Van Jones. They all, and I, wait, I'm, I'm going to get this shit straight, rap. Get it straight. I, get, I'm going to learn these motherfuckers now. Let's take a breath. <sighs> breathe, breathe, Moody. <sighs> In our history, because these people molded us. Yes. African Americans have been molded by these people, Right. So in our history, we always got brainwashed Negroes. Mm. There's no reason he should be up there talking about Republican this and that and per- this and that. That shit don't apply to you. They don't like you. What the fuck you think? Everybody wants a job, but golly. That's like, for me, looking at that, the guy with the cowboy hat, what if you, it was a Jewish guy wearing some Nazi shit? Right. With the history, you would be, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Ugh. So that's how we look at this motherfucker. <sighs> Take that hat off and put a Yankee hat on. <laughs> yeah, put a fucking Yankee hat on. Melania and- Trump, she fucking around with Michelle's speech. Plagiarizing. Ma- ma- but I-, I like Melania because she's about that no fact check in life. She's like, fuck it. Well, just give me the prompter. I'm just going to read. Right. She- she- she's not about that fact checking life. And she I'm don't a- care. She's about that. How you say, I know fact checker. <laughs> yeah, th- this is the first lady. Uh, how, no you fucking- say, uh, how you say, I- 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 how you say, I know uh, fact check? No. I- 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 <laughs> is that Chinese? <laughs> I made her sound. Was she from Ukraine? I don't know nothing about Melania. Yo. I don't like her. Uh, her eyes freak me out. She looks like a cat. I want to, uh, at least, I want to give a, some respect to Donald Trump and Giuliani who wear their shit on their sleeves, who will tell you in your face, I don't like no Mexicans. I don't like the black people. I don't, I'm going to build a wall. I'm going to keep these motherfuckers out. I hate the Muslims. See, when a person deals with you like that, you understand where they come from, and you know to stay away. Right. Right? And he knows where you are, and you know where he is. You can deal with a person like that. Right. But when you get a motherfucker that will talk behind your back, who don't like the blacks, but in your face, yo, we're going to try to make things better. But in the back room, money's on some bullshit. Right. So I respect Trump and Giuliani for being forthright and honest about their they shit. They just don't give a shit. Yeah. And that's why, how could a person like that... See, we don't need to worry about Trump. We need to worry about the people he's speaking to. Such a large segment that will 
deal with a guy and love a guy who has no political uh, expertise, no uh, uh, foreign policy. If I tried to go to a Starbucks and run a Starbucks, they'd say, get the fuck out of here. Right. You started a barista, asshole. You don't know how to run a Starbucks. Well, I've done this, I've done that. Man, shut the fuck up, right. man, and start mopping the floor. Right. But this guy could potentially be the president of the United States because he's kicking all that fly shit. Because he's stirring up the racial resentment. So he has to create enemies. Muslims. And it used to be just black people. Right. Because it wasn't any other really too much immigrants. So you could castigate blacks and be like, you're losing your jobs because of integration. Right. So it stirs up that racial animosity. Same shit. It's a strategy. George Wallace, Richard Nixon, they used it, Ronald Reagan, and they won the White House, which is my basis for predicting this guy would win over a year ago. Mm. See, I'm rap poor stereo pockets. I need to fucking snap. I need to take a drink. And they go with the theme of America, Mr. America. We, we are American. And basically what they're saying is that nigger in the White House ain't American. Damn. That's the code. That's the code. But Mr. America, where's your American wife? You got this woman up here who can't fucking speak. <laughs> where's Cheryl Teague's at? Right. Where Farrah at? And in this 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 make America great again. We've brought this up before. What time in history was so great that you want to go back. Is it the 60s? It's Jim Crow Black Codes era where black people are separated and they know their place. When is the time Make America Great Again? That's what he's talking about. If you say we want to make America great again, again. what is the fucking time and place? What is the period of time that they were referring to. If you can just articulate that for me. We can. We can do reasonable deduction. It wasn't the 20s. No. It was a depression, right? right? 40s. Couldn't have been the 60s. World War II. When no motherfuckers, the black people, no immigrants, we in, we in the shithole, but everything is great. But think about it. It's great if you got slaves. Right, that's fantastic. You don't got to do no work. You making all, you got free labor. It's great right. for you. Right. That's what they mean. All right, I, I, I got to get off the politics. My, my, my brain is going to explode. We'll be right back with more I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. Welcome to Play It, a new podcast network featuring radio and TV personalities talking business, sports, tech, entertainment, and more. Play it at play.it. What you got, bro? What do I got? I got a lot. I got a lot of. I got a lot. I got a lot. I got a lot. Kanye West, Taylor Swift, have once again proven that hip hop is. No, I said it. Hip hop is dead this morning. It died. Hip hop is dead this. Isn't that how it went? It died. I can't. We can't. They did say this is Taylor Swift and Kanye West beef. Yo, this is like a fucking, this is like a, like a, like a bunch of little kids throwing watercolor paint at each other. But look who he's beefing with. Look who, you started with this girl, you still going? She don't, she should not she should have told you from the beginning, yo money. Get the fuck away from me, man. Word. Her man should have said, yo. Her brother, somebody should have been like, yo, dude. She don't have no one of them white dudes who knows karate, kick him in his fucking head. And that would have been, and now Kim Kardashian leaked the video. Of his, who cares? And Kim Kardashian's like, I'm tired of people. The every bi- time Kim Kardashian puts a video out, every time she leaks a video out, somebody's getting fucked. Somebody's getting long dicked. Mm. She's two for two with videos. Somebody's getting long dicked. Somebody's getting long dicked every single time Kim Kardashian puts a video. And she tried to get Taylor Swift sugar dicked on this one. Now, Taylor Swift, all she needs to do is come out with one of her little pop songs and she'll be good. And what do you do, Kim Kardashian? You braid in your hair like you bout this shit. I want to see, she gonna, next thing she's going to have a, 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 a thing of grease in, in her legs. I got to braid my daughter hair, you know. 
She she black. She no, she brown. That's what they that's what they say now. Right. They, they brown. Right. And like 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 her life and it, her daughter's life and her family's life has anything to do with people really struggling in the streets. Right. She said, oh, oh, I, I don't want nothing to happen to my brown baby. Let me tell you something, baby. You are so far removed from the masses of, of, of people, black people, white people, working class. You're so far removed from that shit. Nothing going to happen to your child. Nothing. He in what, Bel Air? And then Chloe Kardashian's messing with the little girl. These girls, ain't, these girls ain't doing shit. Well, up there with fucking, they got, they, they got, they got their hair braided, every they, which way but loose. And Yo, that, shout out to all the NYPD, yeah, FDNY, all the hardworking policemen Law in New York City, hardworking firemen in New York City. Word. Let's give them a shout. Yo, let's let's clarify shit. We. Support police officers. 150%. I have friends who are on the force. I respect their work. Their work is 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 uh, extremely hard. And most and ninety percent of them, ninety eight percent of them, do an awesome job. I've been stopped a lot of times. A lot of times. You I'm still you, living. You, you got stopped a couple of months ago. Two cops let you go. They were going to put your ass in jail. Right. So, <laughs> shout out to those cops, by the way. Another absolutely. shout out. Yo, the, the law enforcement across the United States, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, they do a great job. Of course, you have rogue cops. Of course. But for the most part, I support them guys and their work. All right. People have been asking for us to speak about this Pokemon Go phenomenon. It's I have a phenomenon. no idea about it. It's a video game. That you play on your phone and it's basically like a scavenger hunt. Right. So you got people walking around and f- like f- on their phones like scavengers or like dumb fucks to get points, to chase, to get pokies, little cartoon things. There's distraction. From people the are finding shit. dead bodies. People are getting hit by cars. And unfortunately now, two dumb fucks, two assholes jumped off a fucking cliff. In Encinita, California, playing Pokemon Go, down in San Diego. They sustained injuries, although they, oh, they lived. So since you guys lived, you Pokemon playing cocksucker. You scavenger hunt going motherfucker. You jumped off a fucking clip. I wish you broke your fucking ankle, you dumb fuck. You're a grown fucking man playing a fucking video game. I got your fucking Pokemon hanging low. <laughs> now, Monetti. Oh, I, I have one thing. Okay. Quick thing. You can go right back into it. Okay. Uh, just like we were saying that the bathroom situation with the transgender would cause some undue <laughs> foolishness. Yes. We had something happen. A transgender woman got caught snapping pictures of ladies in the changing room over the stall. So she would hang the, uh, hold the camera up and, 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 and video them changing. You see, this is a man. You see, if that was a real lady, ain't no reason. You see, that's what you're going to have. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Right. Now, if you had a separate bathroom... That problem is eliminated. Right. Because he'd be taking pictures of other men. Right. You know? Yeah. Good. <laughs> now, I, I, I feel like this is becoming a common thing. And I don't know what to call it. Do we call this shit, shit fucks of the week? Because this is the third straight week where we have something to do with feces. This is a trend. Well, I don't know what's going on. A guy in Jersey... This is a new tactic for resisting arrest. A 27-year-old guy, they say defecated in his pants. I say shat his pants. So officers would not place him under arrest. He said, yo, I shit my pants. That's not yo, a crime. Yo, I shit my pants. <laughs> but they, they, they wanted to arrest him 
uh, 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 for, 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 I don't know, he was acting wild in his car. He was in there drinking. He did it in his car? Jesus. And he shat in his car and he was being aggressive, la, 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 la. And then when he was asked to be placed under arrest, money told him, yo, I shit my pants. Told I his shit my pants. Told his ass to the precinct. Huh? I wouldn't touch him. We're going to tow you to the precinct. <laughs> <laughs> right? Imagine that shit. On the back of the car. It's a nasty motherfucker, man. Yo, this is, this is a problem. This is a serious, serious problem. Feces as a weapon. Yo, soft ass I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast t-shirts are available and ready to be worn. They're so nice. They're so good. You could get the full Iverson t-shirt, which is my favorite right now. The hard body karate t-shirt. The I Don't Fact Check t-shirt, the Loaf Walk 2016 t-shirt, all super duper soft t-shirts at districtlines.com forward slash I am Rappaport. We told you it was happening and the Platinum Party is going down August 5th in Los Angeles, California at the Dime on Fairfax 442 North Fairfax. All platinum music. The fans have made us platinum. We're now double platinum. By the time we get to August 5th, we'll probably be triple platinum. Show. From 8 to 9, it's an open bar on me, the Gringo Mandingo. Mm. Get crazy. Get nuts. No cover charge. At the dime, all platinum music. Any hip-hop that's ever went platinum. The good, the fantastic, and everything in between. And we're going to make a note to the DJ. Yeah, you don't, don't, we, this ain't, no, this ain't no, no funny shit. So if you want to play Bust a Move, you can play it for a verse. A verse. If you want to play uh, Ice Ice Baby, you, you get a verse. A verse. And we we don't play that. that shit. Yeah, yeah. Come on now. So the Platinum Party is going down August 5th at the Dime, 442 North Fairfax, Los Angeles, California, 90036. From 8 to 9, drinks are on the Gringo Mandingo and the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast crew. Have a good time. Um... What else is popping, Monetti? Yo, all loaves matter. We got some shit in Southeast Asia. Not again. That is, is I can't take it. Utterly despicable. Oh, uh, what happened? All loaves matter. A guy suffered an agonizing death. What happened? After beefing with his uh his wife, she grabbed a hold of his testicles and and squeezed them. Ah! Crushed them. Damn! To the point where he began to vomit and he died, choked on his vomit and passed away. She, she did this? Yeah, with her hands. All loaves matter. Word. Yo, man. Think of that. That's, bar- that's barbarianism. Where is this lady? Uh, Vietnam. Yo, man. That's what they're going after now. They're going after the, the most vulnerable positions. So always all the men. Always don't protect your face. No. Because your face could heal. But if somebody grab a hold of your balls, yeah. you are gonna immediately drop to your knees. Yes. Yes. If a motherfucker when you playing ball, they brush against your shit. Yes. It's time out. Yes. Yeah, if you're on the train and someone you know, hits you with the with their backpack, you you keel. It wasn't meant to be manhandled. No. Caressed. Yes. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Get that brain. Ah, oh, man. All those matter. All those matter. Um, Monetti, you know what I haven't gotten to ask you about? What do you think about Kevin Durant going to the Golden State Warriors? I, I haven't gotten your take on it, your hot I think, take. I think on, on two fronts. I think it's some sucker shit after you lost three to one. You had him up three to one, and you lost, and then you go to that team. That sucker shit uh. on the streets. But business, <laughs> business, go to the team where you think you're going to get that championship. Fuck it. Be a man and be like, yo, this is business. I'm not going to be playing the NBA for fucking 30 years. But he's only 27. T- only 27. That's that, yo. You want to win now so you can win multiple championships. Now, here's the thing. You go to Golden State, you win one. You win two. Why not go back to OKC? Like yeah, LeBron. Yeah, I mean, and for what? It's not like he's going home. He had a mission to go back. And Russell Westbrook is going to be gone by the time Kevin Durant wants to go back to OKC. That OKC bubble is done. I don't know why they didn't re-up. I just wanted to get your, your, your thought on it because I hadn't gotten it. They shot. They did the same thing to his jersey that they did 
to black people in the fucking 1800s. They shot, they shot the jersey, burned it. Damn. Same shit. And riddled the jersey with bullets while it was on fire. This is the same shit they was doing back in the 1800 to a human being. Don't ever go back there. Go back there and score 56. Get the guy who shot your jersey courtside seats. The fans. Fans. Over 30 million people have nail fungus. There's no nail fungus shaming here. That's roughly 10% of the U.S. population which is forced to treat nail fungus painfully or risk major side effects. g have you had nail fungus, right? Hell yeah, had a discolored fucking toenail. Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, nail fungus does not go away on its own. Thankfully, there's now ClearTouch technology. Radiancy, the makers of ClearTouch, make medical aesthetic devices for the professional industry that treat skin conditions. Yeah. The technology in ClearTouch is LHE, light and heat energy. LHE is a form of phototherapy and can cure your nail fungus. Nail fungus is no laughing matter and it isn't to be shamed. Did you know untreated foot fungus can be transmitted to your partner while you sleep? Damn, what? That, that's a risk. Take care of the issue today. No fungus shaming. Visit www.cleartouchnails.com to purchase this revolutionary technology. That's at www.cleartouchnails.com. All right. That's it. This was hot. This was hot and heavy. I am Rapport Stereo Podcast. Eli Lake. Yep. The I am Rapport Stereo Podcast. Unofficial political correspondent. I hope he was enlightening. Thanks for joining us. Yes. Um... The world tour, it's coming. For you. It, it, the world tour is coming, people. First leg is kicking off. First leg is kicking off. The 28th, 29th, and 31st. IamRapportTour.com. Keep giving us the support. Trust me, the soft ass I Am Rapport Stereo podcast t shirts are super duper soft. Monet, do you have any parting words? If Donald Trump wins, yeah. And I predicted it that he's going to do, do just that. Then you get behind him because we all live in America. We don't want this guy to fail once he gets in office. Now, you can hate on him now because he kicks a lot of bullshit. But if he wins, we're all in the same country. So we can't be like, yo, I hope he fails because this is us. He's not going to win. I done told you he's going to win. I told you he's going to win the national, right? You, you said that. You did say that. Right. So uh, Eli Lake, the political correspondent for the Amber, he said he thinks it's going to be a wash. I think it's going to be a complete wash, too. What do I know? I don't you, know yeah, shit. You, 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 I'm the foremost. Okay. I'm the foremost motherfucker out here. Okay. All those pros yes. dismiss Trump as some kook. Yes. I kook. said he's going to fucking win. Yes. And where we at today? Mm. And I'm predicting him... To win in a landslide. And what about uh, Chris Christie? What do you think about Chris Christie? The reason why he didn't get pegged. You can't have a fat motherfucker out there representing the United States. You can't have your vice president looking like Zorba the Greek. That's what it is. It's the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. Miles, Jordan, take us out with something something real nice, something real funky. Something real proper.